Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome. Now hopefully everything is a-okay volume wise. That'd be excellent. Should be. Should be okay. Generally it tends to be okay. Okay. <laughs> right. We shall pick up from where we left off then. And there we are. I do hope you're all well. That was quite enjoyable tea time, but I uh, do wish Marco the best of pastas that he shall be eating right now, I imagine. Okay, so we'll take a look at the actual summary of what we have essentially ongoing here. Well, what did we do in the uh, last stream? Well, we'd... Uh, let me go ahead and just turn... Uh, right. That's what I want. There we are. How you doing that, Edmund? Thank you very much. Yeah, so, in the last stream then, essentially, we had begun the actual campaign here, the Stalingrad to Berlin campaign. Uh, we do have the 6th Army over here, which has been, in fact, trapped by the Soviet forces out here in the south, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we went through with our air power, really, which isn't exactly saying a lot. Uh, uh, we have just a couple AOGs, essentially, mostly, mostly fighter groups. Everything we have here is what couldn't be withdrawn. We'd have to move it out manually. But it's going to remain for the time being. Just for the time being. I want to try and make some use of the actual uh, tactical air power there. Uh, but we'll see about that. So beyond that, then, we'd basically taken a look into what we wanted to do. We'd made our decisions on the air power. We had taken a brief look towards the actual logistical system. And what's, what's quite good here, in fact, is that we do have a great deal of depots are all ready to go, which is quite good. Now, I'm quite tempted to actually turn these all the way down here, in fact. Now, we do have the civilian economies who do have the actual production in the background, which is used in rail capacity out here. So you can see that we are using this capacity here in Germany, in the Reich, essentially. But the issue is, with them being set to, like, free, it is drawing freight, and I'm not exactly getting much in the way of utility out of that. I'd be tempted to set them down to... Uh, zero, but I think one should be okay for now. The ports over here, then, are they... Whoops. Are they sending us anything? How <laughs> you doing there, Purge? Good to have you, my man. Yeah, so it doesn't look as if we're sending... I'm not seeing port supply here right now, which makes sense in fact, because we don't really have... Oh, we've got a size 2 import port there. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, there we go. That's obviously not a good thing there. So, the port over here at Constanta could do be on a higher... Yeah, export. And then over here, then, we have the import port. I do love saying import port. Yeah. So we have a size 2 port over here. No, so size 3 port. I believe these, uh, each size of port, each unit of port is it? able to handle about 7,500 uh, units of freight. So that's what? 15,000 units. Uh, what? 22,500 units of freight? Something like that. I probably worked that out. Quick maths does not work when you're not quite thinking. <laughs> so somebody check me. I'm probably wrong. Okay. So I'm going to have these turned out to one. I just want to essentially have the... Because you can see that we have the national supply over here. Now, um, from Berlin, would it be in the national supply center? National supply is also, I should say, we do have about 200,000 units of rail freight there, essentially. Yeah, you can see there. Quite a lot of freight within the actual capital there, <laughs> which is not too surprising. Capacity there is 16, indeed. How are you doing there, Ove? Good to have you, my man. Hope you're looking rather attractive today, I must say. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have these turned down. They are more than able to grab the freight that they need. I would be surprised if they couldn't. And essentially at this point in time we need to have the freight move towards the front. <laughs> yeah, Vienna, another source of national supply there being with the star. So I'm going to have these turned down. And uh, the past... I can go to a one for now. It doesn't really particularly matter out this way. But the rest... Again, we'll have that set down to a one for now. 
Plasti uh, should be relatively okay. And this is drawing freight. I mean, the thing is, I don't want to have freight over here at Plasti and Bucharest. I want to have freight out here at Constanta. I want to have freight moving up through the system. We do have another port over here. Uh, this port, though, is not exactly on the rail line. I don't think it really has a road connection, apparently. So we have poor road connection out here, but not essentially. We do have a single rail over here. Now, um... Oh, the, these uh, single rails, I actually looked it up, they're actually able to carry 12,000 units of freight. So this is 12,000, 12,000, essentially they can only, they can carry at maximum 12,000 units of freight. That's that's their bottleneck, that's as much as they can carry. Uh, the uh, double rail over here can carry 30,000 units of freight. That's why they're super important, because you need that freight. You absolutely bloody well need that freight. And that's why I'm trying to reduce the freight... It is good to have these depots here so they can actually accrue a little bit of freight or just be in position. Um, when you do build a depot, even if you can build a depot essentially at any point along the rail line. And it will construct a, a size 1 rail guard, which does increase the actual capacity of the depot by about 10,000 uh, units of freight. Which is good. <laughs> and that's very good. Without, it's only 250. And that's not good. No, not good at all. Uh, you can use HQs to build, uh, boost things like that. But yeah, you really want to have rail yards. Rail yards are really good for boosting that capacity. Right, okay, so we have the Port of Odessa over here. Now, the Port of Odessa is actually really quite good because it is on a size... Yeah, on a dual line, on a dual track line. Uh, which is really good. Why is it not import? Uh, no. I don't like that. But I'm not... I don't know how I feel about the port uh, supply in this area. Uh, it is an interesting one, really. It's another way for us to push through freight. I'm not entirely sure if I want to hold on to the Caban in this area. I'm, I'm going to have to think about this one. What I'm... The issue with the Caban here... We do have two hours, so I can actually get really into the nitty-gritty of me not shutting the hell up. But instead of talking about things for no reason. Yeah, so you can see that we have, like, the 30k units of freight that can be moved through here along this rail line. Okay, so that's 30k. Which... Nice, okay, fine. Yeah, uh, all well and good. But the thing is, it's like... We really need more. <laughs> Ideally, we need more, and that is a problem. It becomes quite the bit of a, it becomes quite the problem as well. When um, what are, what is our road connections like now? Uh, not particularly great, frankly, which does make things even harder. We don't particularly need roads per se, but they certainly do help. And see, the issue is here, we do have... I mean, it's an issue, it's a both a blessing and a curse. We do have a depot over here, so you can see that the depot has uh, capacity there, 25,000 units. It has 22,000 units within it, I do believe. I take a look. Uh, I'm pretty sure it has 22,000 units of freight within. If I'm reading right correctly. I forget which way, which way, which way round it goes. No, it doesn't. Mm, no, I think the capacity is... Is it damaged? Ah, uh, it's damaged. So yes, in theory it could hold 25,000 tons, but it's actually damaged so it can only hold 22,000 tons. We have stored there uh, 2,021 units, I do believe. Uh, we sent out 3,137 units of freight there, and we used 490 trucks. Okay. So that's not too bad, because obviously we do have these guys within three hexes. So they're going to be using um, animal born uh, transportation well uh, horse carts essentially that sort of thing really maybe they use a rhinoceros who knows maybe a mammoth that'd be cool but yes the the awkward thing with that is that it will double the actual supply cost well the actual movement cost that's the thing you're not using trucks but you use let, let's assume then you use one truck to move uh supply i know i've got an idea okay right imagine there's 10 supply let's say 10 use of freight and okay I'm not too sure how much freight is borne by a truck. Each truck in the game is represented as being a 2.5 tonner. But let's assume that one truck carries one freight. So, okay, that's 10 trucks. Now, within three hexes of an actual depot, you can have that done by animals. So there's no trucks being used. But it consumes more. So, for example, let's say with the animals, you can only carry... Well, you can effectively only carry 50% of that freight because the other 50% goes towards the animal feed, that sort of thing, really. So while you're not using trucks, you are using more freight. So it's like, uh, it's like a give and take. It's, and it's quite a nasty give and take. It's like, well, it's worthwhile to do when you can, 
But <laughs> you're not going to want to do it on the front like this. It can be done. It is useful to do because, yeah, like, I mean, things like this where we have Viking, SS Panzergrenadier, uh, obviously the regiment over here. Now, they have 836 trucks. They have 971 that they need there. So, useful, because having more trucks will mean that these guys have a great combat value. Uh, they have greater mobility, but it's like at what cost? Because you're not gaining the supply that you really want to have there. Is there any benefit from securing the Caucasian oil field simulator game? Oh, yes. Uh, we do have... If I go over here to Occupied, we do actually have oil production. Obviously, the majority there is at Mike Copper. We have 12 there. It's quite damaged. But within my copper, we actually do have here... Uh, stored currently 4,000 units of oil, which is good. It is good. And it is the difficult thing for me to really reconcile, because I, I don't consider this to be really worth holding. Uh, let me go ahead and bring up the actual drawing tool. Epipen. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, epic pen. Now, there's a couple... Uh, <laughs> there's a couple things I've been thinking about regarding this. Let me go ahead and grab the pen. Uh, yeah, that should be okay. Okay, so as we are now, we have... Uh, we have the mounters down here. That's great. That's nice. That's very good. We do have the freight. Okay. We do have rail lines out here. Okay. We have ports. Not many of them, but we do have some. Season that port there would be quite nice. But we don't have it. Which means that the Soviets have it, and that means that they gain supply there. They gain freight. But the issue is, is that this is a very large area. Very large. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, these rails don't go that far in here. There's not really roads in here. It's it's kind of like the death of the trucks, you know, for the units that are here. Granted, you don't need to have many of those trucks in there, but it's not exactly ideal. Like, these guys are suffering from being so far away from depots, from being far away from roads and that sort of thing, really. It's not ideal. They are going to be bleeding trucks. Not very nice at all. It's very inefficient. So, what I'm considering is, and it's a difficult one really, because I do want to hold on to my cop to an extent, because it is nice to have access to additional fuel, sorry, additional oil. The question comes down to at what cost? Because the, the, <laughs> the uh, realist in me is like, okay, where do we draw a line? Well, for me, the line would be there, and then we'd essentially, um, well, we'd essentially go for something like that, if we could manage it. Now that, I find, would probably be quite beneficial in a number of ways. It does lose us some victory points. It does lose us the cabana, essentially. Gain, uh, it does open it for the Soviets. But we do narrow down the geography of the actual area there, which is going to be quite an important thing to bear in mind. But granted, the actual amount of forces concentrated in here isn't super great, and neither are the ones from Soviets, but we do have them building up over here. Now, an alternative is that uh, we continue to hold this sort of area. Whereabouts is my cop? My cop is... Where's my cop? My cop's around here somewhere. Where are you? There we are. Right, okay. So, we have my cop about there, then. Okay. We have mountainous terrain over here. We have a major river here. Okay, that works so far. We do have minor rivers over here as well. That sort of thing there, really. So let me just go ahead and draw that again. So what I'm considering then is... And we do have what looks to be rough terrain here. That, uh... I don't know what that's uh, looking like. Uh, if I was to go ahead and go like that, I could make it a uh, pretty awesome... Oh, no, I lost it. It was going to be a snail. Now it looks like some kind of demon. Not ideal. Yep, so it looks like we have rough terrain out here. Very useful to have. So effectively, what I'm looking for is like anchor points. And we have an anchor point down here in the south in the rough terrain and the mountains. We have the anchor point over here in the fact that we have the uh, rough terrain. We have over here the major river, which is very beneficial. You do not want to get pushed back across a major river. You take about three times the attrition damage. Essentially, when you're forced to retreat, you take attrition damage is, is what it's called. Uh... And when you get pushed back across rivers, that increases. When you get pushed back against, well, across major rivers, that increases yet further. 
You do not want that. It is bad juju. Bad juju. So what I'm thinking about then is how can we actually reduce the difficulties of logistics in this area and maintain my cob at little cost? I don't know. How, how would you guys feel about it so far? But what I'm thinking is potentially something... Well, let, let's go and... Uh, so I do have that. I'd need to hold that sort of area there. At least I actually do have rail out here, so that, that works for me. But then something like that, and just make use of the rivers where I could, really. How you doing there, Jackal? It's good to have you, my friend. So that could be something that we can do. The issue, again, comes down to the sheer vastness of this area. It is difficult. Even at that, that's still quite a lot of uh, terrain to cover there. So, that's something to bear in mind. So, um, hmm. in terms of actual oil and etc, I mean, this campaign will go to 45 and later, I believe. So in terms of what we have, I mean, this is a thing that has to be really recognized as a, at what cost. There's a great gain, but there's a great loss as well, depending. Like right now, we have 150k fuel in storage. We produce 189, we use 193. We need 260 there for the fuel refineries. We have 564,000 units of uh, fuel there. We have a stockpile of, of, well, yeah, 564. I don't know why I looked elsewhere there. But yes, we have 66k units, 101 in the pool, and 397 in the actual cities there. Yeah, so nice, cool. We do have synthetic fuel, which does help to alleviate the situation. Oil is very critical, but obviously having resources is a big thing too. And as for the thing that we also will have to talk about is like uh, the economic game. So, I don't know, what, what would you guys like to focus upon? Because, I mean, this is it. Like, I love the grand campaigns. Because I love the fact that the problems are grand. <laughs> as you could say. So, I'm going to go through here and just... Um, uh, my, I mean, how many ships do we have in the Black Sea? So, okay. In the Baltic Sea, we have 26 troop ships and we have 100 cargo ships. In the Black Sea, we have 16 troop ships and we have 51 cargo ships. I don't know exactly how much we hold on. Uh, sorry, I don't know how many ships we send out. I don't know how much ship each, how much freight each ship carries. That one's an unknown. Uh, the air war is kind of non-existent for the time being. The reason being is we're down to six twelve aircraft right now because I took the majority off the map. Uh, we essentially have just fighters in these areas. You can see that we have JG fifty two. We have numbers in there. Uh, JG3 and JG51. Well, there are more there. Yeah. Oh no, JG51 is the actual group there, but you can see that they are spread out. Uh, then if I could have uh, 194s. And then we have the BF10Gs, uh, BF109G2s up there. Oh yes, happy Thanksgiving indeed, yes. Uh, the, the game, uh, Gunnicus is one of these two is on sale right now. I believe it is. Is it fifty percent off? It is fifty percent off. I don't know how much the game is based. Actually, I can't recall right now. But it's 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 money off. So go get it. Uh, the game will be coming out on Steam on the 9th of December. I do believe as well. So go get it. I believe if you get it from the. I'm pretty damn sure. Nine nine point nine percent sure that if you buy it from the Silverbrand slash Matrix store, you will receive a Steam key. Double check that. But I'm pretty sure that is the case to be. Yeah. There we go. As Shu says, thank you very much for that, Shu. Okay. Right, so I'm going to continue. Uh, but I'm going to... <laughs> this is the problem. I tend to uh, love to venture out to different things and, and, and essentially take a look at the different aspects uh, of, of the campaign that we must recognize. So I'm going to take a quick foray into resources then for a second. I know it's it. Uh, yes, there we are. Resources you think would be more widespread than they are, but they are not. So it does make resource centers quite viable. I and mean, we do have oil all the way over here at the front, but I just think it's far too forward for us to really hold on to. It could be potentially done, but it's just, it's it's not very likely. Hmm. Oh, I'm not too sure it's coming out in November. I essentially live under a rock, um, I must admit. 
if I'm not doing this sort of thing, I will be doing studies, and uh, essentially, I just, I just <laughs> don't keep up with anything. Okay, so Voroshilov Grad, Voroshilov Grad, Grad is obviously worth holding on to. Yeah, I can see that we do have the major resource area here. Rostov is fantastic to hold on to for it to be, well, for the fact that it's urban, it's on a major river, it's got swamp around it, it's really nice, it's got the uh, dual double uh, gauge rail here, there's port nearby. Lots of good stuff, lots of good stuff there. Hmm. Okay. It's tempting to abandon this area. I must admit. It's tempting to go for something like that and have a stage withdrawal. I think what we'll go for then is potentially the stage withdrawal I said then. Uh, so essentially we'll try to backtrack where we can over here. As these forces move back, these forces can fold in as well. And we'll try to manage it in such a way. I would like to hold on to the oil out here. But it's like at what cost? Because the fact is, it's all well and good to have that, but I would like to have the unit density. Even if these units are not on the front line, they're going to be seriously useful being able to actually replenish. Or potentially move elsewhere. So that's the thing to bear in mind. So I'm going to let you guys uh, have a think about that. What, what do you feel about this one? I'm super tempted to just pull out of the area. But I'd like to hear the opinion of you... Uh, Fine generals. Alright, let me go ahead and continue with the depots then. Minsk is okay. So, yeah. What essentially I want to be doing then is drawing freight to places where they can actually send it out. Uh, these places over here have a capacity of rail. Like, you can see that we have 50k there. So those are not too bad. I think within Germany I'll go for ones. The ports are an interesting one, of course. But logistics is one that we really need to take into consideration here. We have 43 action points. I need to figure out how we can actually make best use of those. But yes, these depots over here are very useful to have. Alright. 30k units of freight over there. Uh, it's kind of an awkward spot, though. But no, it, it's pretty good, actually. I'll, I'll stick with that. Above. Okay. Right. I'm going to take a look at those ports then shortly. You not shut the door from Astrakhan to the... <laughs> beneath it. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's the issue. Is obviously getting over here to Astrakhan. It's just... Oh. If I take a look at these guys, their supply detail. So they're drawing from a depot that is 17 hexes away. It costs us 24 MP. And they actually were quite fortunate. So they received 44 freight, but seven of, seven of that was lost there. Now, if I take a look, they had four admin failures. Yeah, penalty 14 there, because they're at such a distance, it's not great. Vehicles from pool. So they received 25 vehicles there. Um, right, vehicles. Yeah. So we have 605 vehicles in the unit. Which is actually more than we need right now, which is actually a lifesaver. You can see that we required 556, we used 25 and we lost 3. Okay, not so bad now, but this is only a smaller element of the unit. And losing vehicles is not great. Losing freight is not great. It's inefficient. These guys aren't really... I mean, they're not too bad off now, but you can see that uh, the issue here for them is supply. I can more or less manage, but it isn't going to be great for them. I mean, they require 32... They have nine. Not ideal. They have 28% of what they need. And that ain't gonna get better. And then obviously add combat to that, and it gets worse. Hmm. What I mean is from, say, Rostov over to. Oh, oh okay. Um, I think. So, so you like thinking something like that? I mean, that really would depend on breaking the 6th army out. If the 6th army could be broken out, uh, we could maybe go for something like that. It depends, really. Isolating this area is all good. If I could get that rail line, that'd be nice and just isolate these. But it doesn't make a great deal of difference. They have a lot of uh, supply. They also have the ports there. Yeah. So, 
what time we're on? 30 minutes there, I've wasted. Okay. I'm just going to finish this over here with a depot. I hope you guys don't mind going into too much like this. I'm going to have to take a look now at the depots towards the front. There's not too many out this way. I just want to essentially draw freight to where we have a capacity to send it out. Uh, Kharkov. Is it Kharkov? No, it's, yeah, it's Kharkov I'm thinking of. Kharkov there with the size 9 rail yard. Mwah. Perfecto. Very nice. Oh, this is the Stalingrad campaign. Uh, we're on, well, it says turn two there, but that, we just had the air phase. So this is the very, very opening of the campaign here. As you can see, the Stalingrad to Berlin campaign. <laughs> Don't worry. I didn't do things this historical. But it's, uh, it's good to ask. Okay, import. In terms of ports, then, let's take a look. Riga being a size four is pretty useful. But do we have anything better then? Well, this is an interesting position over here. God, I want the pots over here at Arianna Bomb. That is so nice. Even that uh, 40. No, sorry, even that 1500. I mean, I, I say even. Only. That 1500 uh, would be quite nice. Yeah, yeah, no problem there, plastic. Good to have you. None of that. Yeah, these pots would be great, but they're not likely to happen. They're not isolated due to the fact that uh, they do have this over here. So they ain't gonna be a, a happening. Which is not good. We also need to hold that area there. So, what we need to go ahead and take a look at then is uh, essentially, yeah, okay, so this is relatively good. Looks like they were drawn there from, yeah, that had been the airfield. Yes. Uh, let's try and figure out what we're drawing here. So we've got Army Group A. Right. What is our group A of compass? We have the core down there. Our group A. So let's go ahead and take a look then. Uh, not commander reports. Logistics. I'm going to go ahead then. No. Freight, I think, is what I want to be looking at here. Uh, do I have it as army group A? Yeah, I do. Okay, so army group A received in terms of uh, supply needed. Uh, replacement. Freight. Replacement freight? I think it's way around. You read it. Uh, I think it is, yes. Replacement freight. Mm. Simply by nature. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, I think this is one is the freight received. Okay. What do they need? Ah, uh, required, I think. Receive, no. Receive. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, I forgot how it's worded. <laughs> is it that one I want to be looking at? This is a more in-depth one. Yeah, I think that'll be it. Placement trade received, then. Replacement received, okay. I need to get an idea of how much they require. Okay. So, first Panzer Armour, 17th Panzer Army. Hmm. Okay. First Panzer, 17th. I'm blind. Ah, first Panzer. Okay, so first Panzer Army. Oh, there we are. So they need twelve fifty-three. They got fourteen fifty-eight. They lost three thirty-four though. Replacement freight thirteen thirty-five. Replace. Okay, so mm, it's not bad for them, but that makes yeah supplies loss is important. That's a big thing there. If we take a look at supplies loss, that it's something that adds up each turn. And then we have seventeenth Army, which is here. All right. Okay, they're actually uh, essentially over-provisioned, but I think that's due to the fact that they've received quite a lot of replacement there. Which, okay, but I didn't want it to go out this way. Yeah, they're not supply priority free, which, okay, sure. All well and good. Yeah, trucks being wrecked is not good. That's what we're trying to well, try and minimize. Hmm. 
And we do not want to have that. Okay. Now, I need more capacity here. I've got 30k there. You can have a maximum of 60k. Uh, and you can gain that through using, like, HQs and that sort of thing, really. Mm. So, we can try and bring that up. Like, we have the FBD over here, which is quite useful to have there. That will help us quite a lot. Uh, we're blessed in the fact that we do have the majority of the rail lines already repaired, which is quite nice. This line over here, and you can see this line suffering. Like, note that we have, on a line that can handle at maximum 12,000 units of freight, we have 10,833 units of freight being used. That does not leave you a lot. It bloody well doesn't. And that is a big problem that we're going to have out here. Um, it's not seen used right now, because obviously it was cut off during the turn there. Yeah. I think because they do have, yeah, they do have quite a bit of freight stored there, so there wasn't that much use on the line because obviously, well, it's already been uh, stockpiled. What do we have over here then? Yeah, so there's about 10k, yeah, there's about 10k in each of these stockpiled. Uh, 11k there, just quite handy. Okay, so about 30k stockpiled there. 6.9 there. Yeah, 3.9 there. Okay, not too bad. I'd be tempted to establish another depot. Yeah, here would be quite nice. The reason being that it is the cross point there. It just helps us to transfer from depot to depot. At least that being there of a size uh, 2 rail. I'm just going to call it that, it's actually quite useful. So I'm going to go ahead and have that established as a high priority. Um... It'll take some time. Obviously, we don't have a rail guard here. So it's not going to be great. It's only going to be able to st uh, handle about 10k max. But it does come in handy. I like it for the position that obviously it's on the dual lane, uh, dual rail there, so it will be able to receive freight relatively easy. Uh, okay. These are alright there, I guess. Here I do have Army Group B. Uh, Army Group B there is helping. Yeah, you can see that the capacity there is 45k. Yeah, you can see Kharkov there, max of 60. It does have that uh, HQ there as well. Yeah, you can see they've got 28k stored there. Hmm. See, this line here is really, really good. Like, a depot here would be very useful. Yes. I mean, these lines are really quite critical here. And I have 20k there. Hmm. It really depends on how we want to take this. And I think we'll have to start by addressing the uh, priority of the armies. The 18th army over here is in a pretty... Oh, I got it. It's in a very interesting position. We have 63 of 27 there. Yeah, that's gonna... Uh, that's gonna be leading to some uh, problemos out there. Some major problemos. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to address that. And that's gonna be fun. Okay. I'm going to leave it to you guys then. What, what, do you, what would you like me to start with? Because obviously this has been quite the large campaign. And me being who I am. I can quite easily meander for hours. So you give me something you guys would like to see done first. Because I will meander. Like the Mississippi River. I don't know how I feel about that port. Odessa's not. Well actually no, Odessa's quite decent. So I go for high priority there. That port. Uh, nah. I don't know. It's got uh, 6.2, so that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Here we have 18k. Okay. Yeah, it's just the fact that we have that movement here. That should ideally move out there. 
I'm actually pretty tempted to move these HQs up so I can actually use their capacity elsewhere. Essentially what I need to try and do is funnel the freight to the front lines. Which is easier said than done. I mean, the thing is as well, we have freight down here. Stored, okay. What do I have? Two there. There's actually quite a bit of freight stored over here. That's pretty damn good, but that explains it due to the FBD being there. That definitely helps. Capacity 30k. Hmm. Yeah, in terms of the area then, we have rough terrain down there. This area over here being clear terrain doesn't help. We do have rivers there, which are okay. They're not likely to freeze down here. I don't think they'll freeze down there. Uh, the climate zone is humid warm. Humid warm. Cold. We will see snowfall. But I don't know if we'll see frozen rivers. We may do, but I don't think we will in humid warm. But I could be wrong there. Generally, it's a better area to be in. As the... Well, the weather on the ground will generally be better. This area out here is not going to be exactly ideal, as you can imagine. That's humid. Hmm. Because obviously then we have the rail yards here. Oh, okay, yeah. So it probably would freeze them. Makes sense. <laughs> At least down that way. Hmm. So essentially we're not in a, a terrible position, really. I mean, the Sixth Army is. But we'll ignore that for the time being until we get to that. It's quite funny, actually. Um, it was the Lord Hammer with a viewer, and he says, ah, Operation Buffalo. I'm like, ah, what's that? And I googled it, and uh, it actually is a real operation that the Germans is actually conceived of uh, to withdraw out to the self-same area. Initially, when I had googled it, it came with a film. I'm like, I'm, I'm not quite sure I catch the drift, but no, it's, it's a true thing. So, we need to address a number of different things here. And it's like, where to begin? This, uh, as great as it would be, needs to be withdrawn ASAP. Uh, we need to essentially form a reserve. We need to essentially form a fallback. Now, in terms of what we have in VP. Oh, see, Stalingrad is... I don't want to lose Stalingrad because that's 30, but I don't know how much choice we'll have in that matter. It's very, very strong to actually have Stalingrad. He who controls Stalingrad controls the fate of the corpses. But yes, it's not exactly great down here. There's a... There's a, whatever you want to call it, is good, but, uh... Yeah. Uh, rivers are a... false sense of security in some degree, but they are handy right now. I mean, this is a difficulty over here, but it's like, this area isn't particularly ideal anyway. There is a rail line that goes through it, however, which is quite handy. But we have Smolensk over here. I mean, what we could attempt to draw upon is something like a line, well, obviously not that far, but uh, uh, let's say something like that is probably what we'll end up with. Whether we'll actually be able to gain that or not, I'm not too sure. But at the moment, oh wow, this is new. <laughs> this is like, this is new. <laughs> I've not seen that before. The game keeps getting updated and things are... Uh, to change. So we're at 673 right now. Okay. A sudden victory would be sub 50. Obviously then it becomes quite more difficult. We'd have to get some 50 by turn 8. I don't know how that's going to happen. Hmm. Where is it? Yeah. Turn summary. Hmm. So we lose initiative on 606. Alright, so we have got a fair bit of leeway there. For now, anyway. 
Yeah, so I do really want to hold on to Krasnodar and Mykov then, so I think that does decide that. It's going to be difficult, but I, I, at least I can keep it relatively stable then. So I think essentially what we're going to be going ahead and doing then is uh, we'll fall back to a line, something, I don't know, something like that. We'll see how it goes, but essentially something of that nature. At least I do have a rail line to support that. I do have Krasnodar and I do have my car. Krasnodar, Krasnodar, whatever you want to call it, it does have a pretty sizable rail yard, which is quite useful. Very handy. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's not really much of a way of choice. If we take a look at the OOB, uh, we do have quite the disparity in men there. But the big killer, really. Uh, more men is useful, but more men is more freight required. And there's a certain limit to how much we can really, uh, realistically support well. Three million is probably kind of around that. So that's not too bad. The amount of men is not too difficult. We do have uh, replacement manpower that we can bring to the front. But the thing is, we need to be able to bring it to the front. So that means actually having the freight there to deal with that. So this is why I'm making a special amount of effort to look at this. We did air last time. Thankfully, air is not too well last stream. Air is not too influential right now, but freight certainly well is. The Soviets will suffer with freight as well, but the thing is, it's like, for example, around here at Moscow, they've got 200k uh, rail capacity, rail freight capacity, whatever you call it. Freight, uh, I believe it's freight. That comes out of Moscow, would it be the national supply? That's a lot. They also do have each of these rail lines here that can transfer 30k. So that's a lot. So these units over here are going to be very well supplied. They do have a road system out here as well, which is it's not the best, but it's relatively good for Russia. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're working essentially on a drip feed. <laughs> uh, we have the one size. I'm just going to call it size 2 rail, uh, but I'm going to, I'm just going to call it major rail. We have a major rail over here, which is bringing us about 30k, so that can handle 30k there at max. How much is it carrying right now? Thankfully, it's already got quite a bit of freight stored up over here, so it's not too bad, but it will become a pressure situation. But that's a problem. Luckily, this isn't worth victory points, so this is over here worth victory points, so but it's like, yeah, that ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. So... What I'd prefer to do then is, I believe we will essentially fall back to this position out here then. We don't really have much of a choice. Not especially. Not saying that, we'll have to take in a phase withdrawal. We do have the solid defensible terrain here of the heavy woods. There is some light woods in here and some swamp over here. At least we have that in there to work with, which is uh, pretty well handy. But it is a difficult one. We we do have to be fairly quick in how we pull out here, because otherwise we can uh, have things fall apart rather quickly. I suppose it's done The sooner you try to break out, the more likely you are to succeed. Yeah, exactly so. I mean, we will take a look at the effort. This is going to be like uh, almost like a stream of itself, actually, trying to do this effort down here. The early turns will take time, because we have a lot to uh, juggle. But yeah, it's essentially going to be trying to juggle a reserve and going from there. Now, speaking of... Uh, we have a large amount of air power that will be going into the Axis reserves next turn. Right now at 173, so we obviously need more air power here. Uh, ground, I could actually take about 10% out. That would be relatively okay. I do have 26 Panzer Division over here. Um, obviously, they're lower on tanks there. I'm tempted to have the 26 Panzer Division. I'd have to double check on transfers. Are they transferring out anytime soon? I'll have to double check and make sure that they aren't. Um, I think that's the 30th turn, perhaps. And maybe they go to Italy? Is that what it means? 30 I2 is uh, turn 30, they go to Italy? I think so. Maybe. But I'm tempted to have a 26 Panzer Division move down to the Axis Reserve then. Uh, it can actually pick up additional armored units there. We don't really have much of a move out here. 510 mixed in uh, artillery regiment or artillery brigade. Oh, artillery battalion. 
Okay. I was going to say eight guns is quite small for it, just that. Yeah, so that's something we have in terms of leeway there. We do have bombs, of course. Transports could be something moved out. Uh, what do we actually have here, then? The Geo 244. Okay, tempting. But we'll see. I'm not too concerned about air freight, really. <laughs> Mostly because we need to get the hell out. And we need to have the rails. If we lose the rails, or if we don't have the rails, and things become difficult. Air freight is just... Yeah, it's it's not even a band-aid. It's like you It's not great. <laughs> it's something. It's better than nothing, but it's not great. Okay, so I'll be viewing at number one oh four there. Uh, I'm gonna be attempting to draw out assets from here for our Axis forces. Obviously, like in terms of German forces, they need to come out first. These headquarters over here do come in quite handy. Though they are quite a large stockpile of men, essentially, because they are quite large units, and they do come in handy like that. But essentially what I'm going to try to do is rotate uh, Axis allies into the garrison of Soviet units, who could draw out more German units, and, and really have uh, a stronger force to work with. I don't mind having a smaller force if it's a more efficient, viable force, if that makes sense. Yes. Axis Reserve, then. Now, I do have some interesting units out here. I do have one reserve right now, which is quite important, because it's like, well, where does that go? The Luftwaffe Field Division is an interesting one as well. Okay, we do have air units, we do have self-filled, etc., etc. Romanian engineers there. Okay, these are quite interesting units. The Star Brigades are very interesting, because they do have the Stokely F8, which I mentioned last time, with that really seriously good gun. Oh, pretty good gun. Pretty useful gun. Viable gun if you will. Now moving on to the Italian theatre. You can see that obviously we are seeing an issue here in terms of ground. Uh, naval's fine. Okay. That's not bad. Yes. Not much we can do about that right now. Africa is again one of those ways not, <laughs> not like much can be done. We are okay on the air front, which is awesome. Which helps to delay this theatre. You can see that air combat is quite high right now. In Italy, it is non-existent, which is a blessing that will change in the future. Uh, these forces can't be moved out unless you have like 90% at least, I do believe. So no look there. And the Balkans, we have 8, 8 and 104 in terms of air power. Okay. Uh, the other theatres are modelled, but in an abstract sense to a degree. Like, you will... I mean, this is it. I imagine it'll be something that uh, will be improved upon in future iterations and additions to the actual game here. I, I fully expect that. Uh, but for now, they are here on the front. Uh, so they're here represented, but in an abstract manner. Like, um, the war in Africa is ongoing, and you can't win it as the Axis, essentially. You can't win it. You can delay it. You can delay an allied victory, but you can't, can't change that. Maybe in the future you might be able to. Who knows? But delaying it is good because it means that like, you maintain uh, relatively safety in Italy. So obviously once Italy is invaded, then the amount of requirements goes up here rapidly. And substantially. Luckily we do have some Bulgarian forces out here, which is really awesome. That air power is handy. Okay, so... And then the last front then would be the Finns. Low right now and medium, but that will increase, I imagine. Yes, you can decide and move things around. It's quite handy like that. Quite handy indeed. So do you have Panzer Battalions over here? Uh, Panzer Freeze, Panzer Twos. And then even some French tanks out here. Do you have quite a bit of artillery? Panzer Jäger and AA. But yes, the requirements for the finish front will be increasing shortly enough. And then our last front over here is Norway, which uh, 118, 86. 103. I'm a little hesitant to draw from these features because I know that the requirements will shoot up, especially here in Finland. They will shoot up. Like there's actual combat over here. So I'm not super keen on doing that. But what I will do then is, let's see, 100. I'm going to have the 26 Panzer Division transferred to the Axis Reserve. So that will go and arrive in the reserve over here next turn. Units in the reserve do recover much more efficiently. Where to the Y, so you know the allies ain't coming. Yeah, that's true. Well, we can move forces from France, but you can't move entirely 
as much as you like. Um, you're prohibited from moving forces if the ground requirement is below 90% if I re remember. So yeah, you have to maintain garrisons in that. Uh, if you have well, yeah, if you have below the requirements, I do believe. Also for advantage, I think it's ninety. But if you have below requirements, then you do have events that uh, have you lose victory points, and there's also bad stuff. You will start to lose more men there too. But yeah, it will give them lots of victory points, which is not exactly great. It's at what cost? So you've got to be quite careful about what you take. Okay. So, we've addressed that front. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find any rather cheeky uh, engineer units. Let me go ahead and do that. Sometimes, <laughs> I don't know. Um, sometimes I can't seem to zoom in here. <laughs> right, here we are. Right, construction battalions. Mount of Earth. Uh, I don't see anything particularly useful there. Mm, yeah, okay. So there's not going to be any to raid out there. I'll have to just turn that off for the moment then. Okay. Mm, yeah, as Shu says there, that's pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, we will have options and will be things. So, okay. What I'm going to try and do then is make a few decisions here. So, this area can be held. Uh, if I take a look at the forts over here, we do have level 3 forts, which is great. This over here is not worthwhile. I'm very likely to go ahead and set these guys static, perhaps. If I take a look at the actual, uh, let's see, production. Oops. Oh, uh, types, yeah. Active. Right, so in terms of vehicles and pullment, so we have 23,630 right now. 68,000 are in repair. So we have just uh, practically as many in repair as we do have in the depots. So, yeah. Uh, don't have a huge amount of leeway there. I forget what you have originally on the start, but yeah, you don't have a huge amount. So. Setting these guys static and things of that nature. You actually gain ad <laughs> administrative points as well, which is pretty cool. But yeah, so we could gain their 200 odd vehicles. Yeah, 258, which is the amount they have there. It does reduce our mobility dramatically. But the positions that they're in are relatively good. I mean, light woods over there, eh, it could be better. I always do worry about doing things of that nature, really, because obviously you are restricting their mobility. I mean, they they weren't exactly uh, terribly well motorized or, nor mechanized, and obviously taking trucks away from them just compounds that. Essentially, you, you take them back a, a century, more or less. Well, not a century, sorry, you take them back a few decades. I forgot when the First World War actually was then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I forgot I said that. But yeah, uh, that's what I'm tempted to do there. I can rely upon depots in this area. Thankfully, this rail can function due to the river being here. That's excellent. Hmm. The army over here... We do... I mean, this is it. It's like... It can be done. It can be done. You do have to be quite careful about it, though. We are playing on a slightly harder version where the AI will be able to move without issues to represent the challenge and obviously the four sides of Soviet planners. We do have enough freight in here to make this last... A little while. Uh, there's plenty here which is good to work with. Fuel, not so much. So vehicles will rapidly run out. So we need to bear that in mind. There are Panzer forces out here then. So we do have 11th and we have 6th Panzer. We do have 22nd Panzer there. So we have 27... Sorry, we have 22nd, 11th and 6th. So because like there's 3 Panzer divisions over here. But we might be able to salvage something from out this way. The difficulty of armoured forces is that they need to have that freight. Obviously have that fuel brought to them. Uh, we are in winter as well, so they are going to be taking additional attrition. If I take a look over here, but if I take a look at logistics, attrition. Yeah, so, I mean, this is it. We've only just begun, but this turn we had three, FV, uh, uh, three FVs lost logistics. So it's the actual winter, essentially. 
In the first winter, it's much worse. But still, not great. How about the Axe? Oh, sorry, Soviets. Uh, don't think so. Yeah, but either way, something to bear in mind. Hmm. I mean, essentially, what we want to have then is a series of depots here to support each other. Like over here, because we are transferring from depot to depot. Essentially, you, you we don't want to be drawing, like, let's say we have the frontline depot here. We don't want to be drawing, I mean, ultimately, it will become from national supply sources. So, like, uh, Berlin and Vienna. So, ultimately, we don't want to be drawing straight from Berlin and Vienna. Uh, it will travel from depot to depot to depot to depot. Because obviously, if the supply ha it, it essentially has the um, movement points, I think it's called SMPs, strategic move points. So essentially, they will move along the freight. Sorry, they will move along the rail. But if they don't have enough movement points to get to that next depot, it won't move. It won't get to that depot. So having depot, depot, depot will help because you go from depot to depot, which means it's less likely to not have enough uh, movement. Even if it doesn't get to the front, at least it can move closer to the front. Yeah, as she says there, I don't need reinforcements, to be honest. We have more than enough men. The issue with the men that we have at the field is, is not so much in terms of numbers yet. Those the, uh, those the divisions here are weaker than they should be. And that's an issue of freight. Uh, they're okay, relatively. Some are certainly better than others, but on average we seem to have about 10, 10-ish plus K. Uh, there's an argument to be made <laughs> for reducing the TOE of the actual divisions. Uh, let me find a division to work with. Right, so for example we've got the 205th division over here, the Mushroom, uh, the Mario Cappers. So their TOE there is at 70. I believe 75. I believe so. There is a... Yeah. There's a potentially good argument to be made for reducing that down for all the infantry divisions to an extent. Like, I could possibly reduce that down. I mean, I'd consider 70%. I could even consider 50% of the TOEs in, in a sense. 70% uh, is probably around about what they're at now, or near enough. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm quite tempted to do something of that nature. Uh, the reason being that, well, these divisions are not going to try and draw additional freight then. And what I mean by additional freight is they're not going to be trying to draw additional replacements. That's what I'm thinking about. Uh, TOE is our table of equipment. So here we have our table of equipment and how much they should have and how much they actually have. We get to see our upgrades and what they'll receive there. I mean, that 45 <laughs> upgrade there, 45, 45 turn upgrade, quite nice. You can see that the actual number of men will be reduced from the 16.6k, nearly 16.7, nearly down to 12. Uh, the amount of support decreases, just the size of the division decreases, but obviously they gain additional toys. You can see there, 11. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So, I'm considering doing that then. I think that could be a relatively decent thing to go for. If I take a look at the actual, I think it's essentially re <laughs> recognizing the reality of the situation. Um, let me go ahead and select... Infantry. I want them on map. Okay. And. Percentage TOE. Yeah, uh, can I go for a size? Where's my division? Where's that? I could just want those like a button for divisions, but I might be thinking of something else. Army. Core. I guess it just includes infantry in general. Uh, size then. Okay. Can transfer. Uh, let's 
static. Okay, yeah, we can leave that. We can more or less ignore that. Yeah, the game's pretty deep. Uh, but it's another game that I'm going to be learning called TSWW Barbarossa. Uh, that's a board game. It is one that I'll be doing in the future on my own channel. Which is deeper in a way, but equivalent to one of these two. But obviously, it's like a board game, but obviously, we're playing the virtual variant of it. But as deep, if not deeper in some ways. But anyway, yes. Uh, so take a look then, in terms of TOE then. Uh, yeah, so we quite quickly drop off down to the 70s, 60s and 70s, that sort of area there. We do have some that are doing relatively well. I'm quite curious to see where they are. I feel like they're going to be around uh, the north, perhaps. Uh, uh, so this is included in Western Europe then. Can I... Off map. Right, there we go. That's better. That did make sense then. Yeah. So these are the guys that are on the map then. You can see their max TOE. Percentage TOE then. So they're going to be withdrawn soon apparently. Yeah, okay. Now you can see the real picture. So you can see how that drops off there. And that's a reality. That is a real state of the front. And we do have some units out here that are doing relatively well. I mean, like, Hungarians are okay, cool. But that's a different order. We've got 269th Division over here. Which is what they should look like, and they're going to be withdrawing three turns. So, bear in mind. This is what a German Division should look like, in theory. That's rare. So, I think... 70% is relatively well. It will mean a weakening, perhaps, of forces elsewhere. Oh, no, 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 no. Um... I yeah, if, if I'm gonna type in chat here. Uh, oh, I have to use the app. If you type in T S W W Barbarossa, you'll see the one I'm talking about. I actually do have the physical version. Uh, like hell, I'll ever be able to use it entirely. But if you go to my channel, actually, so that's X D R G on YouTube, and if you look at the videos published, you'll see one called T S W W Barbarossa. Have a look at that one, you'll see, and you also get to hear me talking. We are now. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think we'll go for that. I think I will do it. It is indeed a ball game, yes. Uh, I think it depends on army. Over here, I'd like to keep the TOE potentially stronger. But I think this is the reality, isn't it? It's like, yeah, it's okay saying, oh, I want to keep it. But, like, the majority are already down here at 12, sorry, 12,000 men. So it's not going to be a great difference. I think it's one of those where we just go for it and then we'll be able to uh, see the effects. I want to try and reduce the amount of replenishment freight that's required. The less replenishment, sorry, the less freight that goes into replenishment, uh, the more that goes into like supply, fuel, ammunition, that sort of thing. That's uh, really what I'm interested in. In all honesty. Oh, this is also my favorite track. Let's start one again. It's just it's just so great. So fitting. The great patriotic wall. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that then. If I can click on the right one. So I'm gonna take our TOE over here. I wish I could set that to just German forces. <laughs> um, the version I have was a 510 version, but there's a slightly more expensive version which includes the Arctic maps. Uh, if you look on the actual video, uh, I do include a link to it actually set up on my floor. And that is me actually missing out the segment that has Romania, Bulgaria and Thrace. Uh, but I also don't have the Arctic add-ons as well. So the map's even larger. And it does fit into the other games too. <laughs> it's pretty cru it, pretty crazy. Okay. Let's see. Max TOE. So I think we'll go for about 70% TOE then as a maximum. Ideally that helps us out. It will make a change, but um, it'll be an interesting one really. It'll increase the pool that we have of forces. 
Uh, let me go ahead and take a look then. So Germany, and it's the Germans I'm really interested in. Excuse me. Right, okay, pool. So we have 631 squads in the pool right now, of the rifle. It sounds like a lot. I mean, each squad is, what, 10 men? Yeah, so each squad's 10 men. So it's quite a few men. It's quite a few men. Um, oh, the things with the 1940 ones are okay, but obviously we'd like to have these superior ones when they do come about. Uh, let's see here. Let me turn off the production filter. Can I see the later models of infantry here? I love infantry. There's infantry. Uh, do we only ever get a 43 one? No, there's actually, I think there's another version. But essentially, you can see this is a 1943 version of the rifle squad. You can see essentially that we have the reduction in the size, but they have the increase in the amount of firepower. Hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting. You can play a digital version much cheaper. And probably easier. <laughs> okay. So I dare say that we're going to start to make some decisions here then. The security over here is an interesting one. We do have this over here. I do have to recognize this as a genuine threat. Oh, it's easier than one in Pacific. Hmm. Yeah, we'll sort out the northern front over here first. What I'm going to go ahead and do then is take a look at them. So we have 16 for over here. We have a we have a glut of forces over here in the north. And uh, that's all well and good, but then we have a, a, a reduction in the amount down here. Which is not exactly ideal. I mean, things like the Mountaineers are great to have, but I'd rather have them elsewhere. The Jaeger Division is quite cool. They have 75 morale. So they have 5 more morale than the actual uh, normal standard infantry divisions have. So it, it represents a period train, that, that sort of thing. Like the Kerbish Jaeger, whatever you want to call them. They're good troops. So I'd rather have them used elsewhere. Obviously the fact that they are Mountaineers does mean that they're quite useful elsewhere. They do have different COEs though, so it does come down to the area in which you wish to use them, really. They're smaller units in general. Oh yeah. So I've got a Luftwaffe over here. I think I'd rather have a Luftwaffe field division to do things like this. The Luftwaffe uh, field division are essentially... Do I have a fully built Luftwaffe field mission? I do in the reserve. Though I hazard to say fully. Oh no, that's actually up to snuff. Yeah. Yeah, so that's essentially full field division there for Luftwaffe. Mm, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, so they're essentially like our security divisions there, really. I see the issues as well. I hate the I hate the fact that they have the 88s. Those 88s need to go to the uh, other units out there. I love the 88 man. I do have security there. Let's take a look. Yeah, the security divisions are more powerful. Hmm, but they're equipped differently. So then, in fairness, I think I'd be better off sending things like the Luftwaffe Field Division back to like reserve. Uh, or garrison. Garrison would be okay, or, or things of that nature, but I'd rather have the Axis allies do that. Let me go ahead and just bring that down a little bit. Okay. Let's just take a look over here, then. Yeah, we do have the Blessing of Rails out here. Such a bottleneck. Gosh, it's hard to know when to... It's hard starting here. Okay. What I'll do then is I'll start by pulling men out here then. That one's relatively easy. It's just not viable. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, they are really. Yeah, they are. They're just not fit for purpose, really. It's like they have, like, firepower. Like, having these 88 is nice. They have 105s. Uh, they even have bloody stugs in there, which is quite cool. They don't get many, but at least they have some. But yeah, it's just... Mm, they play a very interesting role. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. 
Yeah, exactly, they're plastic. That, that is the future, my man. Okay. The future is the past. Right. 218 first. So 218 should be moved down this way. Uh, yeah, these guys are down there. Can I move a division out? They're at 15 mobility, thank God. And this, this area soaks up freight like nobody's business. So much freight being soaked up here. Hmm. Yeah. I do have the 18th mechanized, sorry, I wish it was mechanized, uh, motorized, which is good. Fifth Jaeger is okay. Uh, I just need to try and draw men out here, but you can only move so many men at a time, which is a difficult uh, thing to have to manage there. So, I do have the 225th. What the hell is the Yeah, then the 225th is bloody over here. It drives me insane. Okay. So, we are going to fall back then. If I move this way, it's easier. We've got the clear terrain there to work with, clear terrain there. But I can, I can be moving to this position here. I do need to just reform it. And that's easier said than done. If I move there, at least I can reform the division. Oh, to be fair though, I may be better off just moving it here so I can reform the division and remain in the size 3 forts. And then potentially next turn move. I'd love to try and hold out for that, but it's just it's just not good. What we need to do now is essentially go into a state of survival. Like, this state of the front generally isn't that bad. Not yet. It can get worse, though. This is the difficulty over here, but that's also due to the weakness of the flanks. But uh, we're just going to essentially recognize the reality of the situation. I don't want to have just one 30k rail line supporting this over here. It can do it, but it's right here enough to do it. Stored, but it's not going to be ideal. The sorts are working with a lot more freight behind them. A lot more is going to be coming in here. We're trying to minimize and maximize what we have and what we want. That is amazing at size 5 force. That's so heckin' fortified. Love that. And you can't build those. Like, that is just... Yeah, I can't build a size 5. Yeah, we'll try and get out. Uh, I mean, this is it. It's like with uh, Stalingrad. It's excellent because it does control this area. It's like if you control Stalingrad, you will control the Caucasus one way or other if you can support yourself at Stalingrad. That's the thing there. But the reality of the situation is... Ugh. And I hate to surrender size 4 forts as well. Those are bloody good. But the issue is we need to essentially have a rolling withdrawal here. Um, it may be that we... I, I really hate it. <laughs> a lot to be honest but what I might want to try and do then is have a stage withdrawal so fall back from here to the size 2 force and then try and push out to be honest the difficulty is then that uh, we may have the force collapse upon us and not have the defenses there but if I could try to increase the density of forces and open up a link to the outside world then uh, at least we have that I don't know. Uh, how do you guys feel about it? I mean, I'd like to try and hold Stalingrad, but I just feel that uh, uh, with the AI actually being able to move its forces correctly, it's probably not that viable. We can break out here. It's not going to be super easy to do, but it can be done. We'd have to focus on this. Reel again this area here, and then just open up that supply corridor. Uh, yeah, kind of like a... <laughs> we'll call it like a bubble. A gas bubble. A floating pocket, essentially, yes. At least we do have fortifications over here to work with. The free van of flanks quite nice. But yeah, something of that nature. The city of Stalingrad is great, but I don't gain much from it. If I could blow up the entire city, that'd be excellent. Maybe later, but now, no. I probably may leave something in the city, perhaps. Like, maybe like some Romanian stragglers, just so I can try and hold the city... Uh, well, not really. Maybe a division left behind, or two divisions, or something of that nature. I mean, there's some weaker forces over here. Something as a rear guard effort just to hold it. The city's urban, which is excellent. It means it's very, very strong. But yeah, essentially try and get out there. What we need to essentially have is a stabilization of the front. I can't believe it. I've spent essentially... So I had an hour and a half last time. We're going to have another two hours here today. So in about three and a half hours, I've only moved like one unit so far. <laughs> 
That sounds like me. But that's the view of the campaigns, and that's why I singularly enjoy is that thought process. Once you get rolling, then things get uh, a going. Okay. Could they reform over there? If I could reform here, that'd be quite nice. I think we'll try and go for that. Let me make sure that they can't get over there. They may not be able to reform into division this turn, however. So we'll move out what we can then. So we've got 15 there, 14. Yes. Like, in terms of these guys here. Two or three vehicles. I want to free up trucks so we have trucks available elsewhere. If I take a look at the 18th motorized, you can see here, in terms of vehicles, they're uh, suffering a deficit of vehicles right now. I mean, the excellent thing here is the fact that... Um, we will be able to save some vehicles. We'll be able to set units static and essentially gain vehicles. So that'd be quite excellent. These positions over here, but a size three is good. But we will essentially want to establish a second line wherever the hell we can. I really do need to have some fallback positions. Uh, the winter isn't as poor for us as it was in the first winter, but it will not still be easy. That I really want to get back up there. It bothers me. But what we'll have to do then is essentially sort out the uh, commands here. So if I go ahead and take a look then, not here, but here. Uh, we'll go ahead and clear these guys. Okay. Uh, we'll sort by... Oh, well, that's actual headquarters itself. I mean, I want to be looking at the command. Oops. Uh, there's that command. I always forget about. Supply priority. Ah, I forgot what it bloody is again. Oh, yeah, headquarters. That's why. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Okay. So. If we take a look. That's assault there. That's good to know. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. So we can see here that we have the 18th under... Is the 18th under Lindemann? It looks like it's under Lindemann. Or it might be Molden. But that's an iPhone. God, I can't believe me. <laughs> My eyes go, woo, like that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah, they they should have just been kept on the front. Yeah, well, in, in the home. Uh, but yeah, okay, so we'll take a look over here. But let me go ahead and just uh, filter out these other armies. So you have the German forces over here. Yeah, so you can see that the... Um, I can't bloody read it. I'm going to assume... Yeah, so that's 18th Army under the command of uh, Lindemann. Okay. Right, and then we have Powerless over here, but six army. Moldol is in control of a knife. Yes, yeah, so we have a knife here. Okay. So, that is a difficulty, because we have a lot to work with here. I do thankfully have Army Group A down here, so we can work with that. So we have Army Group here, which A, which can actually handle more, which is very good. Uh, 17th Army here. Okay. I, I might be able to gain a number of uh, administration points back, so that's quite good. Right, okay. What I'm going to go ahead and do then is we're going to sort this position out first. I know I said I'd do down here, but screw it. Right. Hmm. At least we have something being dug there, which is handy as a second line. This position needs to be withdrawn, though, of course. They're not in the best position there. Well, they're not in the best uh, state, I should say. I 
a division on each of these li each of these hexes is good. I mean, having a a fortification dug here be great, but it doesn't mean I'd lose the rail there. So we need to hold this position. That can be drawn back. Okay. T55 over here, then, is an interesting one. I will have T55 reformed when I can, as soon as possible, really. Right, elements of blue. This will come under attack, I'd wager. And I wager this area in general will come under attack, so we need to bear that in mind. I do have a number of floating divisions around here, which is useful. Now, in terms of what we have here, we have a regiment and we have a Latvian motorized. Yeah, second SS Latvian motorized. Um, very well, well equipped anyway. Well equipped. That is not that sizable. Relatively good on size, but not super sizable. So we have to bear that one in mind. Hmm. So I'd like to have an infantry division there. Alright, we've got 215th over here, then. So I could reform that there. i got the Latvian there, okay. We have the uh, Dutch SS Infantry Regiment here. They do have the higher morale there, the SS, which is good. The greater motivation, I suppose you could say, there. Which is handy. So, two divisions can be withdrawn here. One division could head here. I'm going to essentially um, take the units here, take up these positions, have these units, then move elsewhere. I'd rather have stronger units over here to make sure we can hold the Volkhov. That's what we're going to go for. They do have a great deal of mobility. I will uh, actually, I can't wait to set them static, to be honest. I really would like to have a division on each of these hexes, though. Ah, uh, the Luftwaffe down here is a bit of a rough one. Mm. Okay. It's so tempting just to take them out here, to be honest. 20th motorized vision. Yeah, we're down to half hatch strength. Not ideal. At least two regiments on their line here. They're going to be gone soon. I can cancel their withdrawals. They do have the river there to face, which is relatively good. Hmm. How many units would I need here? I'd only need another two divisions. I've got one division there uh, that I'd plug that. I mean, technically, I've got the division there, so I could plug that. I don't have great faith in this position here, though, so I wouldn't trust it. But I do want to have this filled in here. Light woods there, down to light woods. Swamp, which is excellent. If I take a look at uh, Z, sorry. This gives you the effective defense. So as you can see, we have effective defense of 46, 30, 20. 76, 78, 69, 63, 37. So that position is a weakness. 35, 70, sorry, 80. That's pretty good. 26, 8, 20. Yeah, so you can see the difficulties here. Obviously, it doesn't give you the true, true story, but it gives you a good approximation of what you are presented with. Uh, yeah, so you can see why we do want to draw men back. Positions like this are excellent to hold on to. Uh, the freights are an issue. The rivers does seem to allow us to uh, keep this here. Hmm. 
This has been double whipped does help us out, but it also does cause problems in of itself though. What do we have there? 12. 12. Okay. I could potentially take the 223rd and have it broken up into regiments to cover this here. So I could have like a regiment there, a regiment there. It'll bring us up to, if I break that up, that brings us up to 16,000 men. So it's equivalent to like having a full division give or take uh, of beginning of the war strength, essentially. Which, yeah, maybe could work. Not super keen on it. The difficulty that we have here is essentially the command penalty as well that we are going to be getting slammed with. So I could very much deal with having Army Group North brought into this. Of course, they need to be brought closer to the front here as well. You can see that... Uh, but actually, they can command from quite some distance away. Uh, that's from OK Hedge. Where's the army? Yeah, so they can be within 45, which def uh, definitely helps. But yeah, we do have quite a problem here. I could increase that. Well, I could up that to assault. The issues with the assault is it's like... Uh, I don't fortify as quickly, which, okay. Uh, combat prep, I do gain uh, benefit to, but uh, I don't think it's one of those where it's worthwhile. So I think I'm going to... I'm not going to go for that. I'd rather have... I think essentially we need to figure out the administration. I'm just trying to think how I want to do this then. This area is quite critical. I can't really afford the, the link up of forces here. It doesn't make a tremendous difference because I can bring forces in here, but I can't have him link up. It just means that this problem would never be solved. At least this is a more or less fixed problem for now. Right. Where's the core? What I may essentially do then is keep the security here, but the thing is with the security division, it's kind of awkward because it takes to that command point with it being only 7,000 men. It's not a lot of men. Yes. Okay. So there's a rifle division in there, that's the problem. Hmm. Right, I know it seems a little wasteful, but what I'm going to go ahead and do then is I just want to make sure this doesn't fall. So that means that we have about 6,000 or so men in each of these hexes, which is enough. But what I'm going to go ahead and do then is have them uh, committed uh, to the Command of Armour Group North. Or even OKH if we have to, but AGN for now. Yeah, you can see that they can be within 45 hexes of the HQ and they'll do OK. I don't really need to pass too many checks here, I just simply need to have them in this position. And I think that's essentially how we'll have to take it. Uh, if I could have them set static in the future as well, that'd be nice. But I need to have them in this division, I do believe. But yeah, for now, they can be set as AGM. And that helps to lessen the load over here to some degree. Uh, I can't have regiments essentially in positions like this. I do need to have four divisions. This here being 7k is an interesting one. Blue is going to be moved over here to be reformed. Blue is 11,000, which, okay, can deal with that. Hmm. Need to check that. In reality, it should be like a second regiment here. This one's good, but you want to have a division. That's a thing that works. I may have the Jaeger division actually moved up over here, but it being 10,000 minutes in a kind of awkward position. Uh, it can be at maximum... I love that. Uh, it can be at maximum 13,000 men. So it's about on par with a division. Uh, but I believe they differ in terms of equipment. So that's something to bear in mind. 
What do we have there? 40 artillery, 45, 80. I'm just going to take that as a number there. So 40 artillery, 45, uh, 80. Take a division here. Uh, 48, 45. Yeah, so the indivi uh, sorry, normal divisions have a little bit more. Uh, I didn't look at the infantry guns, but I know that they had, I think, more infantry guns. Yeah, these have more infantry guns. So yeah, that's the thing I'm, I'm looking towards is the firepower. Firepower is going to be quite mm, devastating. So I'd like to have this rotated off the line. Bring it over here, I believe. That gives us something relatively formidable to work with here. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to shift forces down the line here. I need to be able to hold this. Okay, so they can move there. They can move there. So I can replace these two divisions. These two divisions can go here then. Okay, like so. That does mean I can set this uh, unit to static over here, which is excellent. I've got that there. That could then be moved up over here, perhaps. It's a shame about this position here, but it just was not worthwhile. Um... I am going to have these guys set static where I can. These administration points are going to be valuable as hell. Their position there is good to go. I'd like to have another depot established here so these guys could use horse-drawn. But then this is a thing that you pay for. You pay for the vehicles. But then again, when they're horse-drawn... Well, when they're essentially down to just having horses anyway. Uh, it's not really a big problem, is it? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we'll go for that then. Go for higher priority there. Just make sure it's in the area. But I'm going to have these guys set static over here. So you can see that gains is back 339 trucks and 4 AP there. If I go ahead, will that go straight into the pool? So 23, 6, 30. Uh, 23, yeah, 23, 9, 6, 9. And those are trucks I can go then to other things where they're needed. The one thirty seconds is an interesting one. I do have a spare division there, which is useful for us. They can't move terribly far. They could move down there. At least then the Luftwaffe field division could actually support. Which is something. I do want to have a, a proper division down there. That's 14,000. I really don't trust the Luftwaffe. I just don't feel like it's going to work out well for us. Right, I need to reform these divisions. I'd rather move the infantry regiment, so we'll move them back. Move them back. Okay. So that gives me 215... In that position there. It's 11,000 men. Uh, of course, we do have a Latvians. Morale's okay at 70. Could be better, but it could be worse. Okay. Of course, headquarters is going to be required in this area to make sure that these men gain what they need. They need to be able to hold. Here we've got the police. See. Okay. That needs to be taken off the line. It's great. They are good troops, but they're not... They're going to be in a similar situation to the light infantry. And they have less artillery. They have half the artillery. They have no heavy infantry guns. They do have infantry guns and light infantry guns, but they don't have the heavy infantry guns. Firepower is vitally important here. Especially in a fixed position. Yeah, we need to have that firepower. So we'll make use of that. It does give me something I can use to uh, shore up something quite nicely then. Right. Hmm. Morale here, 70. Morale here, 71. 130. Yes. Uh, you can see here the differences of combat prep. That's 16,000 men, so damn good. Hmm. What do we have here? Swamp. Okay, they can be set static here. I 
My security vision's an interesting one. Heavy woods though is king. So security over here is relatively okay. I'm going to set them... Well, actually, do I set them static then? I do have a depot here, so yes, I can. I do want to have as much static as I can. Okay. Mm, yeah, that'd be handy. I agree. So that takes us up to 25,000 there, in terms of vehicles. So you can see that these things do have quite the impact. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot of trucks, but it's a, it's a fair, fair number of trucks. And those are needed elsewhere. They really are. Hmm. Let's make a quick save here in case I accidentally hit X. <laughs> I want to make sure we have at least uh, divisions here. Because this area I know will come under attack. And I cannot afford to lose fortifications here. Alright, what we're we looking at there. That's actually really good though. So I can have them withdrawn. I may have them shifted out this way. Motorize is such an interesting unit. <laughs> That's the uh, thing there. Uh, they don't have that many vehicles. But they do. That's a lot of vehicles. And it's like, what am I gaining from having motorized out here? The speed definitely helps. But then I think I'd rather have them as like a reserve unit. I think I'll have them move there. Let me see. 16k is too large. 12k is relatively good then. So we'll have you shifted. Yeah, uh, these guys I'd rather have moved elsewhere, to be honest. They could be quite useful. Mm. Well, I mean, they kind of... Oh. Uh, they're kind of in an area where it's useful anyway, but I want to have them sort of collected together and, and utilized for certain roles. I don't want to have them just just on the line, really, I suppose you could say. With them having that higher morale, um, I feel like we can make use of them as like a sort of counter-offensive force, maybe? That sort of thing is quite useful. Hmm. Yeah. Someone said you should have the SS motorized divisions take all cash reserve because they come back as. Ah, uh... oh, that's pretty interesting. That's a pretty interesting take. I can kind of see what they're going for. Right, let me see here. So they're only 70 morale. Eh, 70. Well, obviously it's bigger division though. 71. Hmm. Yeah, so this is quite the division. Right, well, the security vision can go here, then. I kind of regret that now. Nah, I'll be okay. 
There's a pretty nasty position to attack there with a the river, but I'll, I'll look at maybe moving something there to support it. Okay. The police division can go here. The motorized can be moved off. I'm going to have them on reserve. Alright, so I have division, 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 division. Mm. Some divisions may vary. <laughs> Alright. You can see that we are gaining some uh, administration points by doing that. Where are we weak here? 26, 38, 21, 32, 24. Okay. Yeah, I kind of regret moving them now. <laughs> Such face sinks. Hmm. Well, that balances that out to a degree. That's obviously a concern here. We'll see what we can spare for that. Uh, it's generally a sort of point that we want to mm, maintain sort of strength. I mean, clear terrain's a bit of a, a dangerous one, really. I do have light woods there, which helps them out dramatically, but that clear terrain's not exactly ideal. I think I will have them placed there. It takes this up quite considerably. It makes this relatively strong. Relatively. Okay. We're not going to quibble over this. I need to make sure this is held. I just simply cannot trust the Luftwaffe. I mean, what I'll have done then is, let's see, I'm going to have the Luftwaffe march to the north over here. They can actually then go ahead and join the uh, blockade of Orion Barm, or the siege of Orion Barm. But I'll have them place them to the command of Armour Group North. Uh, the 20th Motorized, I mean, this is it. We have a superior position over here now. That position ain't going to fall. I could even potentially take out a um, regiment there. Yeah, I mean, we're in a difficult position where you have 26 there. Really could have done with match pressing. Maybe I should have not moved that then. Maybe that should have been kept there so I could reduce the amount of men there and had a regiment in each, or even just. You know. Yeah. <laughs> not easy choices. I 
I think I'll have to settle for that. I mean, I could even move the regiment out, but I think I think that'll help. I mean, it gives us a relatively strong position. Down here is as strong as it's relatively going to get. I'm going to stop saying relatively now. Not ideal, though. Okay. They're going to withdraw soon enough, but I'll take a look at that. I'm going to have to try and uh, set things to Army Group North where we can. And uh, try and reduce the issues here. Hmm. Yes. I'm tempted to place a regiment on top of these here. Just to make sure this is more likely to hold. I, I mean, this is a problem as well. Um... 374, 174, 174. So there's only two hexes I really need to make sure hold. And even then, they're still pretty good. But I would like to make sure that they, they do hold. And I do have that mountain there. I mean, I could even bump that up by another one and have that other regiment remain here. But we'll see how that turns out. It doesn't hurt to have all three here, or maybe even a second here. This is subject to attack from potentially three hexes. So I've got to bear that in mind. Yeah, that's essentially it. You have to use the forts to survive. Okay. These guys are blessed with mobility, though. Yeah. What uh, call is that, then? 24th call. So 4.2, 4.2, That one there. Brings us up 47. You can tell the difference here. I mean, this is like light woods. This is just, yeah, light woods. But yeah, I think that's a big difference there in terms of the men. Yeah, they have combat prep. They do not. What do we see faces then? Rifle divisions, rifle divisions. Okay. Thankfully, their divisions are not cores. That'll change. Hmm. Let's see, do I want to? I, I think. All right. Well, we'll see what the difference is here. 52. Okay. Seventy one's good. I think I'm gonna have them there then. Yeah, that takes us to fifty seven, fifty two. Okay, that that's good. It's good enough. That's good enough. It does leave us with a ninety six division here, which I can work with. We do have two six and a half and ninety six there. And the question comes down to how many men do you actually need in this area? Under the command of the 18th, what do we have? Uh, north. So 18th is 364,000 men. 16th is 248. Hmm. Obviously there are men over here that have been taken away from that command. It doesn't exactly leave us with any sort of reserve, so maybe having a reserve is a good thing. But these positions are fairly strong, but I do wish to have a reserve. So I may in fact use these as a uh, <laughs> small time reserve, but a reserve nonetheless. I think potentially a reserve out this way is not a bad idea. I could show up these positions over here, but then the issue is I compound the issue of command points. I split it into three regiments, I do increase that. It's easy to command a division, then it is to command three separate regiments in different positions, I suppose you could say. Yeah. And it'd be nice to establish that, but I'd like to have it on the road there too. 
though that said, it's like, is this area strong enough to hold? We do see a Soviet core here. Rifle divisions, rifle corps. So there's two cores here. They could attack this position, and that could cause problems. So I think what we'll do then is we're going to have that place over here. And that will be a reserve. That does that. I mean, it'd be nice to have something additional here in terms of reserve. Hmm. Here's okay. The motorized can be said to reserve. I think really I want to have a reserve out this way. Yeah, some risk has to be accepted, really. I'd like to move out this division to the south, but I have plenty enough divisions here and I just need to move them out. I just want to make sure we have enough to hold. The reserve there is more than enough, I think. Should give us enough. Here I'm thinking that we might have the reserve potentially positioned out this way. Um, I do have that road and rail there. Distance matters. So if I'm in this position here, they are potentially able to help. Out here, having a reserve is quite nice. Uh, what are we facing? And then again, this is a thing that we've got to remind. It's like, what we're facing here. Maybe I should just get that one in that position, then move that one there. That would have been a wiser idea. So I think I will do that. Yeah, so they're going to be kept here as our reserve. And they can be shifted here. Now, they're going to be withdrawn shortly enough, but I think I will... I'm going to cancel it. Who knows what damage we may have, but I need to make sure we have this area. Right, so that's relatively good, man. There is a little weakness here, but saying that they do have... Not that much in the way of uh, opposition. So that should be okay. We'll have to sort out the command situation. And then obviously what we'll do here, then, is the same there. So essentially what we want to try and do then is have these forces pull out here. Hold in, I mean this is it obviously, if I, can, if I can hold this position that's nice, if I can go something like that. This position over here is going to be a problem. This position here is going to be a problem. The Soviets are kind of pushing in like this. Oh, so they're going to try and collapse that on us and obviously then drive towards Riga. Uh, to a degree and try and sever the 16th and the 18th army. Need to obviously put a stop to that. There are roads and rail along this area, so that's a nice position to go for, but we want to go for like, the most defensible position we can work with. Here's a difficult one, but I do have Eleke Luki, which is quite literally the linchpin of this area here. That size 540 is bloody tasty, but we do have to recognize the Shia forces are raid beyond. Well, against us, I should say, not against us. Hmm. Mechanized too does not help. This is an area that is in need of reinforcements. And that's something we'll have to set, uh, well, settle. This area can not worry about too much. I mean, there's good terrain here. They've got a fort, so they've got a road. There's not rail here that's a threat, under threat, I should say. So we can manage that. I would probably try and draw forces down this way. This can be uh, blunted with lives. There's light woods around the area, heavy woods. Heavy woods are obviously greatly useful. I do have a panzer nearby, but that panzer really ought to be moved down this way. There's enough forces in this area that can be drawn down this way to make it work. Right, what do I have in terms of depots here? So, there's 6.6k freight stored there. I've got 4.8 there. And uh, 2.6 there. There's no freight here. Well, it's very nice to actually hold these defensible positions in the forts. I do have heavy woods over here that I can move into. Heavy woods there. Heavy woods there. Heavy woods there. Okay. Heavy. 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 Oh, fuck yeah. Okay. Right. So I could go something like that. That's light woods, which is still better. So, I think what I could go for then is potentially something... I think that was Heavy Woods as well. 
I don't know, something like that. Let's pretend this is all heavy woods. I'm, I want to try and take control of the woods over here. Well, hold the woods. So if I could try and collapse this down a few hexes and try and draw men down this way, that's okay. In terms of... Um, so we'll draw something like that then for how that'll go. In terms of this over here, I'm like, does have, he's obviously nice because it does actually have freight, and so I do need to hold that. It's a city. Which comes with its own benefits. I really want that freight evacuated. Uh, here's clear. Swamp. Clear. Clear. Swamp. Light woods. Heavy woods. Okay. Uh, that depot has 1700 now. Yeah, that's what we'll do is empty it out, essentially. I'm just like, again, I'm just looking at the positions here. Ah, but I am out of time. Uh, so thank you very much for watching that, ladies and gentlemen. It's been great. I know we haven't got all that much done, but there's a lot to be considered. And it will get easier. We'll do more as the campaign continues. So I hope you guys enjoyed it thus far. Uh, I will be back tomorrow, in fact. So I will look forward to seeing you then. So, ja, bataraishi. And uh, have an awesome night. And uh, yeah, enjoy the stream. We'll come in next. Thank you and goodbye. Check me out on YouTube for next year. Sayonara. Oyasuminasai. Jaane. Sayonara.